Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to our Q&A session with Ramsey today. Um, as people uh, and everyone else uh, starts joining in as well, uh, just like to mention that this is a very interactive session. So feel free to keep your cameras on and we'll take questions as well. So if you do have any questions that come up during the session or after any point, feel free to use the Q&A box instead of the chat box um, to ask your questions. And I'll ask whoever has asked the question to actually come off me and, and share their question if they're comfortable with that. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, that's okay too. Um, I'll facilitate the questions and then we'll have uh, everyone answering. So yeah, it's gonna be a very interactive session. And as we have everyone else joining in, firstly, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And very exciting session. We're actually joined today by our panelists. So we've got Kim, Sam and Vicky. And what I'll get them to do is potentially come off mute and just introduce themselves first and then uh, we can kick it off. Kim, do you wanna start us off? Sure. Hi everyone. My <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, that was a great start. <laughs> My name's Kim, I am a learning specialist from Ramsey Healthcare and um, I'm a member of the um, graduate team. Hi. Oh, you're right. Hi everyone, my name is Samrana and I'm part of the National Talent Acquisition Team and um, yeah, look after the recruitment process for the graduates. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Vicky, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Hi, guys. My name is Vicky. I'm a registered nurse at Ginger Up Health Campus in WA. Um, and I have been um, a registered nurse since February last year. So I've just finished my grad program, my first year. Fantastic. Thanks so much for the introduction. And what we'll do with the structure of this event is we'll get Kim, Samrana and Vicky to share a little bit about the program at Ramsey Health because what we did is when we took registrations, we actually collected questions that all of you wanted to ask Ramsey and, and find out more about. And a lot of them were quite common. So we'll address a lot of them during the presentation uh, and some afterwards as well. But I'll let Kim kick us off. Thanks, Shek. Um, so everyone, you're probably wondering how I kind of fit into things because learning specialist is a bit of a weird title to be talking to you about. So, um, I began my career as an enrolled nurse and I really quickly realised that I loved nursing and everything that it had to offer. And once I completed my Bachelor of Nursing, I then um, joined the Grad RN program with St George Private, which is one of um, our Sydney facilities for Ramsey. So I worked my way across lots of different areas in nursing and lots of different roles and a variety of managing roles. And um, after collecting a few different um, postgrads and certificates and things along the way, an opportunity opened up for me to be able to join the national learning team. So that's where I've been for the last nine years using my nursing skills, my nursing capabilities and um, measuring them and mingling them with my love for supporting um, our healthcare profession with the pursuit of development. So I'm going to tell you about our awesome company. So this is Ramsey Healthcare on a screen, essentially. Our global network is diversified, sustainable and extensive, and it's situated across 10 countries in 500 locations globally. And as students, you might recognise your local Ramsey hospital. Um, not realising that the hospital is part of one of the world's largest private healthcare networks. And as a healthcare network of this scale, Ramsey leaders are in clinical excellence and can provide evidence-based clinical care to help our patients meet a diverse range of needs across all the different specialties. So it's the largest operator of private hospitals in Australia, and it's one of the top five in the world. And we lead the way in developing the role of private healthcare in Australia to be able to help um, keep Australia's healthcare system quite balanced with the public and the private sectors. We're a leader in teaching and research of both undergraduate and postgraduate future and nursing workforce, as well as allied health. And we have a community pharmacy franchise network 
We also have Ramsey Health Plus and Ramsey Psychology and Ramsey Connect. And these all help us to support our patients once they've completed their hospital admissions. So we've got lots of different facilities. And as one of the top five um, largest providers of private healthcare in the world, certainly the largest in Australia, we can offer many different opportunities at any of our 72 facilities that we have. As you'll be able to see as I scroll through this screen here, they're spread across Australia and it only excludes the ACT, Tasmania and Northern Territory. And we're currently developing several of our sites across Australia, including the new co-located hospital in Victoria, which is the Northern Private. And that will be a 555 bed hospital, which is located next to the Northern Public. And as you can see that we have a breakdown of facilities for each state here. So these are for the in-hospital operations that we have. We recommend that you visit our Ramsey Careers page to be able to seek more information on individual facilities and what they have to offer. And I might just get um, Sheck to drop that in chat for me, if you could, please. The link that Sheck will drop in chat for you is um, a link that will take you to the Ramsey Careers page so that you can go and have a look at what the different hospitals are that are, are located near you and what those different hospitals have to offer in way of um, clinical support, I guess. Don't forget, we have lots of regional opportunities as well, which are a really great way for you to be able to hone your skills as they have um, less readily available um, after hours medical support. So it's the nurses who really gain the opportunity to have some really unique assessment and triage skills. And these are in our regional facilities. So just remember that what you see on the, on the screen here is our hospital locations. It's not our out of hospital opportunities. I forgot Queensland, sorry. Sorry, Queenslanders. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a technical glitch here. There we go. Never quite goes to plan, does it? There we go, okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our foundation year. So I love to think of our foundation year as like an iceberg. So your foundation year is the tip of the iceberg. And in essence, it's your graduate year. It's your true graduate year. So this is where you are supported to transition in a clinical work environment. And it helps you really hone and um, those clinical and practical health skills. What the foundation year includes is a graduate coordinator that oversees you and your program and how you progress. It gives you the opportunity to have a preceptor and mentoring support. There's also debriefing and education sessions with your fellow graduates that give you that opportunity to be able to share experiences with your peers. There's five study days that'll help support your fundamental learning and development. And we also have a range of novice programs, which is designed to help you get that fundamental knowledge for different clinical specialties. And it's really important to note that once this 12 months concludes, you are then moved to the second year of the program. So this means you are not a graduate per se anymore. So you don't have to think, oh, I'm a graduate for two years. You're not, you're really only a true grad nurse for that first 12 months. The development year helps you gain those extra skills. So, um, you no longer receive the full extent of the additional support that you might get during your foundation year. However, this will be available in appropriately measured capacity during your second year. So in addition to this, you're able to access all of the support systems that we have available to all of our staff members at any given time. And the development year, which is kind of like the deeper learning of that iceberg. So it's, um, it's designed to support you to be able to further your learning and get a deeper understanding of learning and development in your chosen clinical specialty. So this enables access to additional support services and helps you transition to um, what we kind of call future business as usual. So what your life kind of looks like there after the program. 
you're able to do one of the following opportunities. So for those of you who might be enrolled nurses, we have the um, EN to RN, RN program, which helps support you through that um, upskilling to a registered nurse position. And that's with our education partner, Charles Darwin University. We have various postgraduate opportunities available with our education partner, who's the University of Tasmania. In the second year, we also offer a consolidation of clinical practice. And what that does is helps you really embed and upgrade those clinical skills, or it might help you explore a new area of nursing practice that you're really interested in, but you didn't have the opportunity to explore in your first or foundation year. The final option that we have is a thousand year scholarship, a thousand dollar scholarship, um, which can be the course of your choice. Now you can either use that for a postgraduate course, you can use that for um, a professional development course. So with our graduate program, we have a range of different options. And the streams that we offer are displayed on the screen. So you can see that we have the capability to support all designations of nursing and or midwifery with the future view to supporting our staff with increasing their qualifications should they wish. So we do help our enrolled nurses upskill to registered nurses and we can help our registered nurses upskill to registered midwives if that's what they'd like to do. So the foundation year um, offers two six month rotations through different clinical areas. And in some cases, it might be a 12 month direct entry to a specialist area. And that might be something along the lines of perioperative services or into an oncology specific area. As part of this Ramsey Healthcare um, Pathways Program, it helps you, you are under, able to undertake your graduate program in a range of clinical settings. So these clinical settings include things like critical care, the emergency department, orthopedics, pediatrics, cardiac services, um, ICU or HDU, neonatal special care, neurology, oncology, and lots, lots more that we have to offer. Did you know that the private sector often, often leads Australia um, and world first in procedures and technologies. And sometimes we do these things that um, may not be available in the public system. So you get the opportunity to check out really cool um, technologies and treatments that are available to our patients for them to get the best outcome. It's really important to note that um, choice of subject, um, choice of specialty is subject to availability in the specific facility that you apply, but you can talk to the facility at interview. So what do we offer as a company? Our company, our main philosophy is people caring for people. So our graduate pathways program really embodies the essence of the Ramsey way. So that is to make sure that we have we value strong relationships, we aim to constantly improve in what we do, and we seek to grow sustainably. And this is shown in the opportunities that the company offers all of our employees, some of which can be seen on the screen. So we truly are a people caring for people, and this is shown by our Ramsey Cares initiative and our sustainable um, sustainability targets. We offer flexible working opportunities and we also offer ongoing permanent employment to all of our graduates. We offer the opportunity to be able to relocate and work in different areas such as regional sites that offer more exposure to varied, varied patient bases. And we have a really strong, supportive and accessible leadership network, both at a hospital and a corporate level. And what that offers is really meaningful collaboration with our leaders of the company. You also have eventual opportunity to be able to undertake a nurse nurse practitioner pathway, if that's where you want to go. And this opportunity is really only offered by nursing um, by Ramsey Health Australia. We really believe in making sure that we can help our people grow as they need to. We've got lots of other varying employee benefits that you'll be able to find on our Ramsey page if you're interested. At Ramsey Health, we're dedicated to ensuring that our workforce has the skills, resources and opportunities to care for our patients with excellence, whilst enjoying a meaningful, fulfilling and ample support and learning 
development opportunities. And we're constantly measuring and reevaluating and adjusting to be able to create the ability to offer the multiple sustainable and suitable opportunities to our workforce as a whole, as well as you, our early career practitioners. And we seek to ensure that we're meeting the needs and wants of you, our future workforce. So as part of this, what the program offers you is a dedicated coordinator with preceptors and mentors to offer support, regular debriefs and in-house graduate education sessions, different rotations across the choice of specialties which are available to um, subject to availability, opportunities to rotate to different Ramsey locations if desired. Um, and this can be not just different areas like high acuity or specialties that might not be available in your facility. You might really like to go and check out the regional um, opportunities that we have on offer, or you might like to come from a regional area into Metro. We offer structured study days to help with ongoing professional development, as well as supported learning and additional learning opportunities for you. So I'm now going to hand over to Sam Rana. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Kim. Hi, everyone. Um, well, um, Kim has um, covered a great range of what amazing um, options the program offers. I will be basically going through our recruitment process, give you a high level overview of it. So essentially the graduate program is designed with, a, with two things, with two objectives in mind. One is that making it as easy as possible, keeping it a streamlined process and making it candidate centering. So when I say streamlined process, we have made the application process much easier. To start with, um, we would, and um, to, that you would have the option to provide us with uh, with your preferred specialty. So as Kim was speaking, I could see there are a lot of questions that are coming in in regards to what specialties like and when they, when you can actually choose them, whether it's the beginning of the program. So this is the application form is where it starts with. So when you do submit an application form, you have the option to provide two specialties that you would like to work in. And you also have the option to provide two hospital choices under each state. In any case, you're still not sure which area of work you would like to go in. You will also have the option to choose that, yep, I don't have any preferences, whether it's a location or it's a, it's a specialty. And um, then you'll be based on, then you'll be uh, probably selected based on other shortlisting criteria. But Eventually, when you if you do get an opportunity to be part of the graduate program and you do get to start working in your chosen specialty, which is which is usually in most circumstances, um, then you also have the opportunity to rotate if you do if you want to explore other areas of the of the program. And especially also in the second year, you've got five development streams to choose from. You obviously can uh, work in other specialty areas to gain more experiences. And um, yes, we want to know about you, which is why the application form and the recruitment process is designed in such a way so we can collect that information on where you would like to go and what are your career goals. That's what the program is designed to ensure that we can help shape your career pathway uh, based on the information that you're providing to start with. And slowly you can go from there as, as the program goes along. Um, I think, um, Kim, would you mind sharing the next slide? Thank you. So essentially, I would just say it's a very easy five-step process. Um, and I've got the QR code for our August intake. So if you would like, you can scan that uh, QR code and it will take you to our um, the graduate application page on the website and you can have a look through the program and check out the other links over there there are lots of heaps of resources uh, but the first stage is you submit your application and then you, if you are shortlisted for an interview you get to do a one-on-one -on -one interview and reference checks if your interview and reference checks goes well then you will be asked to submit your pre-employment checks along with a verbal offer from the side and if your pre-employment checks are all correct, then you will be issued with an offer letter. So it's as easy as that. You submit an application form, go through the interview stages, your pre-employment checks, and you're issued with an offer letter. 
The applications for our August intake will be closing on Monday, 22nd of May. So we've extended it by just another week because we're getting a lot of inquiries. And uh, the other question that I do get a lot is if you're finishing in June or July, would you be able to part of the, be a part of the August intake? Yes, you can be. I would suggest that if your placements are finishing in June or July, that you start your registration process a bit earlier, start submitting, start collecting all of that information that you need to in so that you know your APRA registration much you know comes through much easy easily and quickly and if there are any issues you can always email us our email address is down there so grad recruitment and ramseyhealth.com.au if you have any queries any feedbacks uh any questions around uh any of the recruitment process or the program related please feel free to reach out and one of us from our team will definitely get back to you as soon as possible and on that note, I'll just quickly also answer a question about a work right. I think someone has asked about whether in regards to a visa, um, I would suggest that you definitely check out uh, the immigration website in regards to what are the visa options that you have um, so that um, it's easier for you when you're filling in the application form. Um, but if you have any specific other questions, yes, please feel free to send me an email. And um, that's all from me from the recruitment side of things. I will pass it on to Sheikh then. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Kim, uh, for the presentation as well. So what we'll be doing now is we'll be rolling into the Q&A session of it. And what I just want to remind everyone is feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A box. The reason I say this is because I can see the chat is very busy, which is awesome. Um, but a lot of similar questions are popping open. So as questions get answered in the Q&A box, you all can take a look at them and search in there as well. So if anyone has very similar questions, you'll be able to see links indicated, where to apply emails and answers to your questions as well. And some of them will be answered live too. So with that being said, when everyone registered, they actually submitted a question to ask. And one of our most popular questions by far was what it's actually like being a grad at Ramsey. What's the experience like? What are the development opportunities like? So we've actually got Vicky here from WA, uh, who's been a grad recently and come off the program. So what I might get Vicky to do is, Vicky, could you share with us your experience being a graduate? Yeah, sure. Um, so I started in February last year when COVID kind of hit here in WA. So it was a daunting but scary time, um, but exciting time at the, um, it was, it was amazing, basically. When I started, um, I started on a orthopedic slash pa um, uh, plastics ward, um, and it was very fast paced. Um, I'd like to use the analogy that it was, it's like learning to ride a bike again. When you're transitioning from that student role to the registered profession, um, it's, it's daunting, scary, but amazing. The support that I've got so far from Ramsey from the very first day, um, even up until um, accepting my offer, um, I had um, about... I think eight weeks prior, I'm not sure what they do at other hospitals, other Ramsey sites, but with June Lup, um, eight weeks prior, we'd have weekly Zoom meetings prior to starting to go through any questions, concerns, et cetera. And that was, um, it gave me a good like foundation um, to jump into the role with all my questions answered. Um, what else can I say? Uh, the support, the hours, work-life balance. Um, I'm a single parent. So for me, um, with a little girl who was only just turning five last year, it was really, really good that the fact that Ramsey, uh, especially at June Lup, they offered 56 hours a fortnight for me, um, which gave me that really good work-life balance just for the first few months. And then I had the option to drop it, up it, whatever um, was suiting me at the time. Um, I've had lots of uh, amazing support from preceptors, from uh, the graduate coordinators, um, both Julie and Ellen were amazing. Um, it's like you're being thrown into the deep end, um, but you have so many supports and so many life um, boys there to help you, to keep you af afloat. So for me, um, it was um, an amazing experience and it's something that 
I am grateful that Ramsey were able to offer me. Thanks. I'm not Thanks for, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing uh, your experience as well. I mean, I've heard all too well about Ramsey's flexibility when it comes to hours, when it comes to work-life balance, as well as uh, career progression too. So thanks for actually sharing your experience. Uh, what we might do is we'll roll into a Q&A. So we can see there's quite a few questions in the Q&A box. And what we'll do is we'll actually throw to Kim and Samrana to chat a bit about these questions. I think I can see, Kim, that you've highlighted a question or two that you wanted to have a chat about. Um, so maybe I'll throw it to you first. Okay, sure. So um, there's quite a few that have popped through. I've been trying to type answers for some of them. So um, one of the questions I'm looking at is, are graduate midwives given the opportunity to work across all areas of maternity to gain experience, including special care? Big yes. Big resounding yes there. Basically, we want um, our midwives to be well-rounded, excellent clinicians who are able to work across different specialties. So, you know, if, um, if they're needed, they might be able to work in birth suite once they've post their graduate year, um, work in birth suite one day and then they might be needed in special care the next day and then maybe on pre or postnatal the next day. And um, usually we try and roster to areas. It is um, a little bit facility dependent on how the facility does things. Each one does some, something slightly different. But Stevie, in short, yes, we really like to have our opportunities well-rounded clinic our midwives well-rounded clinicians. So you do get the opportunity to work across all areas and we do strongly encourage that for you. Um, there was also another one that came up. Um, will a graduate placement offer include the area you'll be placed or do you need to accept the offer first? Um, that one's probably a good one for um, Sam Rana to be able to answer because she will send you out the, um, the letters of offer. Sam, do we say the area of offer? Is that usually discussed in um, the interview phase? Uh, yes. So because when you submit the application form, you will be, um, if you are providing the area that you would like to work on, you will have the opportunity to discuss that with the graduate coordinator who will be interviewing you at the side level. Um, so yes, um, you will definitely be able to um, seek further options and um, if there are any other opportunities. Thanks, Sam. Awesome. If I can jump in for a second, I was on the side just looking at some more popular questions submitted in um, by all of you. And probably the second most popular question outside of what is the actual program was actually highlighting the difference between private compared to public as well. And it was voted the second highest questions just looking at the numbers here. So um, maybe if you could share what actually is the difference between the two no problem. So um, it's a question I get a lot too. Well, why would I work for the public instead of the private? Well, why wouldn't you work for the private instead of the public? Um, basically, from my personal experience, I've worked in both sectors. I've spent a lot of time in both sectors, um, but I love the private sector. I love the ability that we have to be able to um, have meaningful relationships with people you know you've got staff that you work with regularly and you build really strong people connections because that's our ultimate philosophy um, the care that we give to our patients is exceptional um, yes it can be busy um, but so can any nursing environment or midwifery environment and it's about um for me, it just it's just so much more people centric in the in the private sector. I in the public sector, I really felt like a number. I felt like I was one of many people doing amazing work for patients, which was great, but I, I might not have the same patient load over a period of time. So I don't get to know patients over a period of time. Whereas in the the private sector, we very strongly encourage people to 
to when we're dishing out the patient, the clinical loads, so that we get to know the patient, we get to have relationships with them, because that's how we can really get them the best care. Um, it's also a lot nicer. We have we have a, a nice environment <laughs> to work in and we get some nice little perks, um, which is nice. But yeah, for me, the biggest thing is the patient care and, and the people relationships that you build. That's why I have worked um, in the company that I've worked with for so long. I just... I love it. Um, in regards to the work, and that's something that people really get caught up in, because um, a lot of the times the education provider or people that they've met on placement will really say, oh, you've got to work at the public before you go to the private, because you just don't learn anything at the private. That is really not true. Um, as I mentioned before, we do lots of really cool stuff that often takes years to get to the public. Um, so for instance, robotic surgeries, um, spinal stimulations, deep brain stimulations, they all started in the pub in the private sector um, because we had that little bit extra money to be able to bring in that really cool technology um, to try and get the best outcomes for our patients. Um, but we often do bigger surgeries too than what they can do in the public. Um, well, some public hospitals, obviously you're not your massive big public hospitals, but we do big cardiac surgeries and big neurosurgeries because we have time to be able to do that, I guess, um, in as opposed to the public sector that really are kind of to, trying to keep on top of their waiting lists. And um, they then also need to cater for their emergent referrals and um, the referrals that come through their emergency services. Um, whereas we usually, um, yes, we have emergent referrals as well, but ours are kind of much better utilised, I guess, our time and the way that we do things. I'm rambling now, so I'll stop. I like the private. You'd never guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kim, for sharing that. It was a really popular question. And I can see another one here that might be a good one for Vicky, uh, actually. And this was our third most popular question as well. So I can see it coming through here, which is asking about um, what is actually the transition like post your graduate year? What does that development look like? What's the transition like, Vicky? Maybe you can share your experience around that. And I can see another one here in here around a part-time grad position that I think you wanted to answer to. Uh, maybe yeah. you can touch on both. Yeah, sure. I'll start with the, um, the question about the part-time grad position. Um, Ramsey is quite unique. So compared to um, going back to the previous question on the public um, or private, um, Ramsey are quite um, amazing at the fact that they recognise that we do need a work-life balance. And so when I got offered my program, they said, are you happy with 56 hours a fortnight? And I said, you know what, that is amazing. And it's actually to help, it, it's a massive change when you go from being that student to qualified and you start working. And in a, a public hospital, you're nine times out of 10, they start you off on a 76 hour fortnight, which is quite a lot. You do go home exhausted and on 56 hours is manageable. Um, so that's just one thing I wanted to touch on is that Ramsey do offer that. Um, and for me, that was kind of like a selling point for me. And I did get asked in the interview, are you happy with 56 hours or did you want to drop to less? Um, which, you know, it's all about making sure that we are valued as people, um, as staff members, and it increases productivity and patient safety. So that's the number one thing I wanted to get across to all the new grads that will be coming on board starting is that that's something that it was kind of like kicking goals for me. Um, in relation to the other question, transitioning from the foundation, yes, I'm from my first year to the second year. Is that correct, she um, Sheck? Yeah, that's right. Um, it's actually quite a smooth transition. So for me, I decided to do my consolidation of skills. So I had two rotations. Um, I did put down my preferences at the beginning and amazingly, I got my preferences. So the first one, I just did a public um, orthopedic and plastics, like I've said before, and then I moved to a private medical ward. And it was during that last six months. So the first, the transition from the, in the first year, from the first six months to the second is quite daunting because you feel like you're starting from scratch again um, but then after about nine months you have a sit down with your grad coordinator and she goes through you know what are your goals where do you see yourself um, next year and I decided to do the consolidation of skills and that for me 
um, just really hones in and brings me back to um, like Kim was saying about the iceberg. So it's just consolidating all the skills that I've learned. Um, and for me, that was um, an amazing, again, amazing experience to go from that. I found it quite a smooth transition. There's, um, you go through your, your skills in your second year, what you'd like to learn, and you've got your study days. So everything for me going that it was really, really smooth transition, less daunting than when I went from being a student to um, my first rotation as a new RN. That's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing your experience, Vicky. Um, just quickly, I noticed a couple of questions coming through around um, people having to jump off because of work or other commitments and things. So everyone that registered for this webinar will get a full recording afterwards as well, which will also be published on Ramsey's Grad Australia page where you're applying for their roles. Um, so if anyone does have to shoot off, that will be sent to you. But that link to apply, uh, it also will have the recording uh, by Monday. So just thought I'd quickly um, say that before uh, we go on to some more questions as well. Uh, but Kim or Sam, are there any questions that you noticed that you wanted to select to answer next? Or should I pick one from the list? I don't know. Do you have anything, Sam? I've got a couple I've noticed. Um, yes, uh, I think Kim, you can go off with the questions that you have seen. Yeah. Okay. I'm just so I've seen, responding, sorry. Are you right? I've seen a couple pop through um, about, I graduated say in June or late 2022, can I apply? Look, absolutely you can apply. Um, what, what we do recommend and what we do look for is that you haven't completed another graduate program. If you have started another graduate program but are, are moving for whatever reason, that's fine. We just don't want you to have already completed a graduate program. And we do roughly say about 18 months um, from your point of graduation to be able to still apply. So um, certainly June 2022 is more than acceptable. Um, off the back of that as well, I've seen people the other side saying, oh, I'm really looking for February 24 program. When do I apply for that? And the applications for that are opening um, after we close these um, April, August 2022 one. So is it about another month or two, Sam, when we open the 24, Feb 24s? Yes, so the applications for the Feb 24 will open around mid-June. Um, we will be able to update the date soon. Yeah. So keep an eye on the webpage, guys. Um, so um, the possible link that we've popped in the chat to Grad Australia um, is for the August intake, but you can also go to our Ramsey Careers page and have a look at the graduate program there to be able to um, to be able to um, apply for the the February twenty four program. Um, and there was one other one that I've seen quite a few times, people worrying about their um, their placements because everything's still kind of cascading on from the COVID um, when everything kind of shut down and the placements were stopped. Don't panic if you are worrying about getting your placements completed by the time you're ready to commence. So if you get a graduate program with us and you're due to commence, you're due to finish in say December, um, 2023 so this year and you've got been accepted for the I don't know the February um, 24 program don't panic communicate with us and say hey I, I'm due to commence or due to finish in December um, but I'm still waiting on one or two clinical practices that I haven't been able to get a placement for and we do our very best to bend over backwards to get you that clinical placement somewhere within our network to make sure that we can help you finish on time and so that you can start on time. Um, yeah, so we, we really like to look after our own and make sure that we can do the best for you. So um, make sure that you communicate with the facility throughout the whole process as well. Don't let that worry you. Fantastic. Um, um, I've noticed a question come here a couple of times, Sam and me. I'm not sure if you're the best person to ask this. And this was actually around uh, international students are they open to apply what does that look like when in terms of recruitment can you share a little bit about that yeah absolutely um if you're an international student and you're currently on a student visa um as i mentioned or a temporary resident visa 
I would strongly recommend that you do speak to your migration agent if you have one, but most of the information is available on our immigration website. So I would suggest that you do definitely have a look on the website to see what are the full working rights look like. Um, it is a permanent position and I um, think that would be the best place um, for um, that question. But if you do have any specific other questions, feel free to send an email through to me at the grad recruitment uh, at ramseyhell.com.au or if it's a site specific or a state specific question, if you have. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. Was there anything else um, that you noticed in here that um, anyone wanted to pick up first? Uh, Kim, I don't know if this would be possible for you, if you can um, respond to this question. So for the pathways from EN to RN, do we have to pay the tuition fees? Will we go through CDU for assessment or we complete through online? Okay, so um, with the EN to RN pathway, yes, you do need to pay your tuition fees. However, um, if you go through the Ramsey program, you're a guaranteed Commonwealth supported placement. So that brings the cost down significantly and you can then um, put that cost onto HEX um, and, and follow the HEX pathway through from there. Um, what was the second part of the question? Sorry, Samrana. Uh, sorry, so that one was, will we go through CDU for assessment or we complete through online? Yeah, so um, there's some online, but you do need to attend residential schools to be able to get your um, your skills signed off. Majority of all of the placements go through Ramsey facilities where we can, so we like to keep you within our network. Sometimes you might need to, um, to undertake placement in another facility, um, but we try and keep it where you live. Most of the learning is online, but yes, you will have, um, I think it's two residential schools that you do need to attend. Thanks, Kim. Uh, it's just another one, if that's all right. If I may ask, when the Northern Private Hospital in Victoria due to be operational and will this intake be inclusive of this facility? In addition, if so, what specialties may be available at this location? Great question. I know the answer to some of it. Um, <laughs> so from memory, it's about, um, I I think July 2024, it's due to open, so about mid next year. So they'll probably be looking for graduates for the August 2024 intake. In regards to specialties, I really don't know. I'm sorry. I know that there will be things like, um, given the size of the facility, there'll be obviously med surge, theatre, um, oncology, um, ICU, HDU, critical care type programs. Um, Unfortunately, that's all I know off the top of my head in regard to that, but you could probably jump online a little closer to the date and have a look and see what's available there. Um, I might actually jump in for a second. I've yeah. got Kelly Webb that um, I believe he or she has raised their hand. Um, would you like to come off mute and ask your question, Kelly? Um, hello, yes, that would be fantastic if I could. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, um, but I'm sort of answering it for a few of the students that are in my class at the moment um, who are completing our enrolled nurse diploma. Um, so we're in Queensland in Ipswich and a few of us are really, really keen and excited to apply for a grad program at St Andrews Private or Green Slopes. Um, so the questions we have is obviously you have the two intakes, February and August. We finish our last clinical placement at the end of April. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be a bummer to have to wait till August to apply for that grad program, but we're also not sure how it works with the APRA registration mm -hmm. because we have been getting conflicting information from teachers relating to how long it takes to get your registration as opposed to applying for the grad program and missing out. Okay, so there's a couple of things here to unpack. Um, so first of all, in regards to getting your registration, I'm gonna tackle this one. This is relevant to all of you online, regardless of what your designation is. Get on to APRA and pre-register. So you can pre-register up to six weeks before you finish your program. So if you have a program completion date of the 1st of December, say, or end of April in your case, Kelly, um, 
six weeks before that, get your calendar out and camp back six weeks before that and pre-register with APRA. So what you do is you submit everything that you need for registration to APRA six weeks before that time. What happens then is they process everything in the background and then by the time your results are released or whatever date the university releases your results, your registration typically comes through within a week after that. Sometimes there is a bit of a delay if it's a high demand period. It can be up to two or three weeks. Um, but yeah, pre-registration, best way to go. Um, gets things done really quickly. If you don't pre-register, you can find that it can take a while, particularly if it's a high demand period, it can be six to eight weeks. Sometimes it can be more. Um, we do liaise with APRA. So if you um, have been accepted into one of our programs and you apply and you're waiting on your registration to come through, we do have a contact that we can go to and liaise with and find out what the holdup is, what you need to do and try and help things move along in that respect. Um, in regards to your start date question, look, it, it really depends. So what I would recommend is that you apply for the February intake. Um, however, you'll need to stress in there when you're closing. Now, Sam Rana, this next bit might be a little bit more appropriate for you to answer. Um, but we are having um, eventually some staggered intakes, aren't we, for next year? Yes, um, and look, with, with, with COVID circumstances, we understand that your placements um, are, like, it will take some time to cover and shuffle all your placements. So if you're looking for um, opportunity outside of the August and February intake, um, you would need to just send through an email to the grad recruitment at Ramsey Health com.au and uh, what I can do is I can come check with the specific sites that you are interested in to see if they do have any available positions and yeah we can just take it from there um, but yes more than welcome to email email me awesome thank you no problem thanks Kelly for asking that as well did that answer your question or did you have anything else to add in there Kelly um, no, that's pretty much covered it all. Uh, I do definitely appreciate all those. Um, yeah, it was, I guess, one of those things where we're just so excited. And when it comes to graduating at the end of April next year, it's kind of like, oh, do we then, you know, don't really want to wait six months to get out there and get stuck in and, and hopefully get a position, especially with Ramsey Healthcare. So that's definitely, definitely answered my question and um, has yeah, it just made me even more excited to get, get on to the application and just start preparing for it early. Some of those bigger facilities too, like St Andrews and Green Slopes, might stagger their intakes. They might have one in Feb, one in March, one in April, one in May, um, or they might take a couple each month. So I would really, yeah, always hedge your bets towards um, the best possible solution and just spell it out in your application what's going on so that they're like, right, okay, we know where we're aiming in this regard. Yeah, thank you so much, Kim. No worries. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kim. We also have a, another hand raised by Henry, Henry Edwards. So, Andrew, would you like to come off mute and ask your question? Uh, hi, just, can you guys hear me? Yep, yes, got you. Um, I was just wondering about if you can please elaborate on the interview process. Um, there's the three steps, the group discussion, the face-to-face -face, and then the group activity. I was wondering if you can give uh, me and anyone else interested a little bit more information on what we're gonna be having on the day. Do you want to take this one, Sam? Hi, Henry. Um, first of all, I would just like to ask you, which state are you based in? Uh, sorry, did you say which state? Yes. Uh, WA. WA. So yeah. Right. Okay, awesome. So this time with our graduate applications, um, the interview is going to be one-on-one. -on -one. So with WA, Hollywood is in WA, Journal of Hollywood. So Hollywood is a big site. So what they have done this time is because they are already pre-planned there in terms of their resourcing and, and all the interview, they're the exceptional one doing the group interview, but the rest of them are doing one-on-one -on -one interviews. So have you applied for a Hollywood one at the Hollywood? Um, yeah, I've got an interview with Hollywood and it, it's a group interview. Yeah. 
Amazing. That's awesome. Great. Thanks for that. And was there anything else, Henry, you wanted to add on on that as well? Um, no, uh, that's all good. But now that answers my questions. Thanks. Oh, all awesome. Good. All good. Cheers. Beautiful. So we've got Cynthia, Cynthia Barwick. Cynthia, if you'd like to come off mute for your question. Hi, I was just wondering, I'm currently on placement um, in the public hospital system and they have an after hours educator um, to support grads and facility. I'm just wondering after hours what that looks like in like the Ramsey Health System um, for say a patient you get that you're not familiar with and it's a new procedure like post-op or um, they've come in pre-admission and like what that looks like after hours say like from 4 p.m to 10 p.m and like weekends mm -hmm. That's a good question. It really depends, Cynthia, on the size of the facility that you go to. So if you're in one of our big facilities, there is most likely going to be an after hours, um, an after hours person that can assist you, an after hours education opportunity. Um, the other thing that you can do is in the smaller facilities that might not have a C&E after hours, um, we do team nursing at Ramsey Health. So what we do encourage people is to go to a buddy or to your preceptor or to somebody else who's working on your team and say, right, this patient's come in. I haven't had the opportunity to do it. I really need to learn. Can you help me with this? And what we'll do is um, work with each other to try and make that happen. So you might help them. I don't know, make a couple of beds um, to free up a bit of time for them and then they'll come and help you with what you need to do, whether it's a large vac dressing or a new procedure or whatever the case might be. There's always someone on hand that can assist um, and there's always going to be senior staff there that can help you with your learning. We would never expect you to A, have to try and do something that you don't know how to do that is very unsafe and it's not something we want people acting outside of their scope of practice. Um, but on the other hand, we don't want somebody to do the activity for you and not get you that learning opportunity. So sometimes it does involve a little bit of um, negotiation on your part. What I um, usually ad advocate to new people is if they come on and they have handover and they either find out at handover or if they find out part through their shift planner that there's something that they don't know, that they raise it during handover, either with the senior staff members that are there or with, um, with their numb and get their numb to either help them do that before that kind of late afternoon activity comes up if you can pre-prepare pre or utilise their nursing network that they have available to them. Hope that answers your question, Cynthia. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Awesome. Thanks, Cynthia. Thanks, Kim, for taking that one as well. We've got uh, Lillian Spink with a with a question. Yeah, hi. Um, I've almost finished my application to apply uh, Ramsey, and I just noticed uh, in the details there I've uploaded a resume, but it's not um, asking for me to upload a cover letter. I just wanted to know if if a cover letter is essential, or if it was just the 150 words to describe why I want to work at Ramsey. <laughs> Amazing. That is a very good question. Um, so we don't need a cover letter. Oh, okay. <laughs> which is which makes it so easy, right? I know, so, and I did one anyway. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, so with that application form, that 150-word summary is our space um, to just let us tell us how you fit into the Ramsey way of working. Um, but if you are interested, you also have the option to upload a video response for that question. So feel free to choose whichever is convenient for you. But yes, we don't need a specific cover letter or anything. It's just that 150 word response. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. No worries. Great. Thanks, Lillian. Thanks, Sam, for doing that. And I'll lower Lillian's hand. Does Anyone else here have another question that maybe they'd like to come off mute and ask? Feel free to raise your hand and I'll bring you on to, to ask the question. And if not, we can just select from the uh, Q&A box itself. 
Hi there, sorry. Uh, um, I couldn't find the, the rising hand. Can I just jump in and ask him the question? Is this okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, I'm just like the uh, right away Ian from the South Korea and everything. I got the registration. And I'm very interested to follow like, the RAM saver RAM. But um, I saw in like the public one, there will be 300 to 400 vacancy like allocation. I'm just wondering like the allocation like for East is say like how many for like Queensland or Victoria or it really depends on the number of application because I think in uh, like we just got one of the facility in here for Ramsay. Okay, I can answer that if you like. Or unless you want to, Samrana. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, basically, we don't encourage our grads to play the number game. So we don't encourage you to kind of focus on how many applications and how many positions are available. There's lots of positions out there and um, we just encourage you to apply to what fits best for you, what you want to do, where you want to go, where you want to work. Now, what we do do is because we have such a large network, if you apply to say, I don't know, Joe Blogs private on the West Coast or whatever, um, and you are unsuccessful per position there, however, you're a great application, we might come back to you and say, look, unfortunately, we can't offer your position at Joe Boggs Private. However, um, we do have these positions at Mary Smith Private. Would you be interested in working at Mary Smith, which is, you know, it might be 20 minutes away from Joe Bloggs, or it might be on the other side of the country, depending on what the preferences are that you've put in um, during the application process. But we really strongly encourage people not to play with the numbers game, because we find that people go, how many is X facility offering? How many is Y facility? facility offering and then all of a sudden they find out that Y facility is offering three times more than X so everybody applies to Y facility nobody applies to X facility even though they really want to go there um, so it, it all just it gets a bit messed up for you so I always strongly encourage people apply for what you want and what works best for you so if you want to work at um, Joe Blogs Private because they have the pediatrics program that you desperately want to work in, apply there, um, you know, and just assume that there's going to be more than ample positions. That's the best um, I can give. Sam, have you got anything you want to add? I think you've covered everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for the question. Sarah, we've got Sarah Lockhart, so I'll just ask Sarah to unmute so they can ask their question. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask two questions. One was, like I noticed before you said you had like kind of the first year you do, like you, you know, you practice your skills and the second year you build on those skills you've built. So I guess my question is just, is that saying that the program's a two-year program and you complete the two years? Um, and then the second question was, do we actually get any supernumerary shifts when we start the new grad program? Is it kind of just we do our shifts on the ward and we have like the support around to ask um, people if we need any help. Yeah. Vicky, do you want to answer this one? This might be a good one for you. Yeah. Second part of the question. So um, you do get, so when you start, you'll have like three days where you'll be kind of like in a classroom situation going through, I think it's about two or three days from now, um, going through um, all your competencies, like your medication competency, um, you'll have a different setup of different stations to go through skills that you may need to touch up on from, from uni. Um, and then in regards to the supernumeracy, we don't, they don't throw you in the deep end. You're not left, like, it's not safe. So you will get um, all the support you need. And it is quite uh, normal to feel, do feel scared or apprehensive to start, um, but you do get the support. So you do get a few supernumeracy shifts. I'm not sure if they've changed that. Um, but when I started last February, there was two. Um, and I think that is a little bit different to public. Um, I think in public you do get a tiny bit more, but it is actually better to get not thrown in the deep end, but um, you, you're going to have a better success um, and less of that reality shock if you are thrown in the numbers um, on your first shift. So the ratio at Ramsey at Gene Lup is 1 to 5 or 2 to 10. So when you start, you'll be in 2 to 10 mix. You'll be buddied up with someone who's really experienced and you'll also you'll be this supernumeracy person so you'll be able to get a feel for your ward know what everything is um, muck in and help 
And the quicker you do that and get thrown in, the better. So, yeah, you, you do get your two supernumeracy and then you've got further um, study days as you go along throughout your grad program. Um, and you've got your staff development nurse that comes on, um, you've got your self-directed learning packages. There is so much support and help available when you first start, and you've also got your preceptors to go to and your CNs and other staff members. I hope that answers. And I can answer the first bit for you. <laughs> um, so basically, um, even though it's a two year program, it's two distinct years. So you get a certificate of completion for your first year and then you get a certificate of completion for your second year. So don't freak out about being a graduate for two years because you get to have, I guess, um, the security blanket in inverted commas of being a, a, a bit of a novice for those two years but their first year is really that oh well I'm a graduate I really need to learn and the second year is you know what I'm just come off my training wheels and I'm doing really well but I still don't know everything that are thereafter might know um so yeah there is two distinct years your development year is more about setting you up for your future and setting up your career trajectory and getting you kind of going where you want to go and letting you see what other opportunities are out there that we can offer you you get to make one choice in that um, for that development year but that doesn't mean that's the only choice you get to make in your entire career most of the opportunities that we offer in that second year would be available um, going down the track certainly um, the post postgraduate opportunities um, and yes just to confirm what Vicky said you do get two supernumerary days okay and everyone goes oh, two supernumerary days that's really scary it is really scary and we get that however there's a really important for you to realize the first thing is once you get your ARPA registration you're a registered nurse regardless of whether you're a new graduate re registered nurse in the eyes of the law you're seen with the same kind of capability okay now that might freak you out in itself, but you need to understand this is telling you that you know what you need to know. You mightn't think you do, and you mightn't feel confident with that, but you've got all the skills that you need to be able to get where you need to go in nursing. The second point is, so like Vicky said, you do all of the competencies and you get everything signed off. We don't then drop you like a hot potato and off you go, because again, that's really unsafe. What we do do is we do use our team nursing network. You might have your one to five or your two to 10 or whatever it is like Vicky just said, but you are working with a team. So you are able to go to your team and go, right, let's see what we can do i'm going to need help with this how about i help you with that and we work together and the other thing is that you um you don't get a full patient load off the bat so as soon as you come out of supernumerary you're not going to be dumped with your full patient load or a full really heavy hard high acuity patient load you might get a full patient load but they might be nice kind of easy patients in inverted commas that might need some meds and some obs and everything else is relatively simple or they'll transition you across so you might start with three patients and then the next day you might find once you've nailed three you're moving to four and so on from there so it's a graded introduction and that's it for me great question awesome question yeah really good one we've got uh doja um next so Deja, i might ask you to come off mute so you can ask your question yep hi so um i actually have two questions so my first question is that if i've already submitted my application and only put in one hospital as an option are we able to resubmit and change that or is it too late if you have already submitted the application, then you can't go in and make a change. What you can do is you can withdraw your application and reapply. But if you have already submitted, you wouldn't be able to make further changes to it. Okay. And just the second question. So this one is for a friend. Now, I know the public hospitals don't provide this. So I was just wondering if it's the same with Ramsey Health. If someone is pregnant, are they eligible for maternity leave or do they need to defer their program? So they can take 
leave or maternity leave. However, it won't be, we won't pay them their leave. So um, under our, most of our EBAs, some of them change um, slightly state to state. So you'll need to see what your individual EBA is. Um, but as a rough guide, um, anyone that's employed for less than 12 months isn't eligible for paid maternity leave. However, they can take leave without pay. The second um, one is anyone that's been employed less than three years. I think you get four or six weeks or something, which is paid. Again, EBA dependent. And then anyone after three years um, then gets whatever is in their EBA. Might be eight to 12 weeks or, again, whatever it is in your EBA. I'm not, it's been a while since I've had kids, so um, I can't really remember. Um, but, yeah, it is an option. You can start your program and take leave. Obviously, we would request that you disclose that up front, but that's not a problem. Um, but, yeah, not um, in that first 12 months, not um, eligible for paid. But you can, I think the government has still got a paid subsidy, so that might help. If that answers the question. Okay, thank you so much. No worries. Awesome. Oh, did you have something to add there, Sam? No, I was going to say that there's a couple of questions that are coming through, which are quite similar. So if I can respond to that one. Mm. Um, so I'm getting, I can see there are a lot of questions around where the flexibility of the program and whether you can work part time and full time. Absolutely. Um, so you can work part time or full-time, which are very convenient. So if you're an EN and also doing, um, studying for your um, RN, doing a bachelor's, um, you will be able to work part-time to accommodate your studies as well. So that's that will not be a problem. Thank you. That's awesome, that's great. And, uh, and that same topic is we haven't have, we don't have anyone else with a hand up. So feel free to raise your hand if you would like to just ask your question. but. I can see one here that might be relevant, which is, could you share some things that you're looking for in an application, Sam? Uh, yes, so you can refer to a shortlisting criteria, um, which is on our website. So essentially, well, with, with the shortlisting, um, I would say that what we are looking for is how you fit into the Ramsey way of working, apart from having, well, obviously you need to have your opera prior to start working, um, ensure that you are able to commit to a 24 month program. It is a permanent position. You will have ongoing employment upon completion of the graduate program. Uh, but yes, there are elements of that graduate program, like your study days, the professional developments, which you will also continue after you finish the graduate program, but you should be available to be able to commit to that. Um, and uh, yes, to be so, you know, how uh, so basically portray through uh, that. Um, Ramsey fit question in that application form, how you fit um, how in the teamwork uh, relevant and uh, be aware of the limitations and uh, know when to escalate the problems. Um, you can draw some examples from your clinical placements that you may have come across in that written response or the video response that you provide. And uh, yeah, es essentially be willing to learn and grow with that program. That's uh, the shortlist thing. What I'll do is I'll drop in that um, link as well that we have on our website so you can have a read through um, in detail so just the link um, in the chat that's great thanks for sharing that Sam and no we've got Quok with uh, their hand up so Quok if you want to come off mute um, hey there uh, thanks so much for maybe asking a question again um, just right at the end, I'm really interested with working with the Ramsey for a graduate program. And uh, thanks for letting me know that like, you guys have the RN pathway as well, because I'm really interested in that one. So like for the, if you just have like a short list uh, with university to like help out to get ideas to become the RN or you have with the, another university as well. Sorry, I don't know if I was the only one, but I didn't quite hear all of the question. Um, I wasn't oh. sure as well. Sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. Maybe I'm just on the bus, so that's why. Uh, I'm just checking about the the pathway from EN to RN with the Ramsay. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
you just have like like cooperate with one of the city you want university or we have like a different choice of university as well nice so we partner if you go through the ramsey um pathway we only offer partnership with charles darwin at the moment that may change we might have additional partners down the track but at this stage we're only partnering with charles darwin and that guarantees you um, if you're accepted into the program by us as part of your second year that guarantees your place but that guarantees your commonwealth supported place so the much cheaper price so rather than the the commercial cost of a Oh, I think it's about forty or fifty thousand dollars now. It's crazy price. Um, it brings it right down to whatever the Commonwealth supported price is, so you're able to access it much less. Hope that helps. Yeah, thanks so much for that. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited like for the interview and for the short list as well. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So much for that. Yeah, I'm just waiting. I'm just submit everything the application, and I think I'm um, hopefully I'm in the short list for the interview. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much for all the information today. Wonderful. Thanks, Wok. Were there any, um, while we wait for hands to go up as well, were there any other questions that you'd like to answer? I, I can see a couple here around the location flexibility, um, around transferring between facilities and what that might look like on the mm. program. Would uh, any of you would uh, be able to share around that? Um, I can, unless it, you other ladies would like to. It's, I just don't want to turn it into the Kim show, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just typing away answers as we as well. <laughs> so, so. Okay. Um, awesome. Okay. So um, as a global network, particularly with our vast Australian network, um, your transfer opportunities are amazing, basically. Um, I like to say it maybe not so eloquently, I guess, but once we get our hooks into you as an employee, we really want to keep you. So um, we are we usually will bend over backwards to be able to help you transfer to a facility that you need to go to. So for instance, um, during the course of my time, particularly in this position, I've helped people transfer from Victoria to Western Australia. I helped somebody go from far north Queensland to South Australia. Um, we help people um, get positions um, in our overseas facilities if there's something available. Look, as a graduate, um, we don't recommend that you try and move overseas during your graduate year because um, it's difficult overseas. They really want you to have a couple of years of experience. Um, but we try and facilitate those link ups where we can. So we touch in with our colleagues overseas and say, we have this amazing person. They came through as a grad with us. They're now two or three years out. Um, they want to move to where you are do you have some um, position availabilities but certainly within Australia portability is really easy you can take your entitlements with you um, it just depends if there's any kind of anything quirky in the EBA sometimes there can be um, but yeah provided that there's a position we we can negotiate and get you something um, to get you to go where you want we really want you to stay within the family once you've joined that's great. Thanks for helping out, Kim. I think, yeah, I saw that come up quite often. So it's a good one to be across. We've got Philippa with a question. Hi there. How are you? Hey, good, Philippa. How are you going? I'm good. I just have a couple questions. So I know we have to apply in June for the 2024 um, intake. Would we get an exact date closer or an email or something like that? or? Do we just check the website? Yes, it will be uploaded on the website. But if you have uh, registered for our um, information, then you would also get an email advising their applications are open. Great. Thank you. And also another question. Um, would you need to complete the 12-month new grad for nursing to switch over to the midwifery if you wanted to do further study? Or did you need to complete the 12-month process and then apply? For a postgraduate? And most, um, most midwifery postgraduates will require you to have 12 months clinical experience um, and you are generally best to get your nursing skills bedded in in that 12 month period before you do tackle that um, a grad dip mid. Um, it just means that your transition is a lot easier for you um, but certainly that's one of the things that um, may be on offer as part of the development year as well. So um, 
you complete your 12 months and then towards the end of your first 12 months, we put out um, what's available. So this year, I think we had 20 um, places, I think it was, that we helped registered nurses transition into a grad dip med to be able to um, convert into maternity. Oh, great. Thank you so much. No worries. Like I said, we want to keep you once we've got you. <laughs> so if we can help you do that, we do. Thank you. Great. Thanks for the question. So we've got another 15 minutes or so. If anyone else has questions, feel free to raise your hands and we'll keep continuing to go through the Q&A box as well. Um, but Sam, are there any that you see that might be helpful to answer live for everyone? Uh, yes, I can see a lot of February 2024 and always 2024 related questions. Uh, there's one that says, if you're offered a position in the graduate program for Feb Intake 2024 and you decide you want to start in August 2024, are you able to defer that offer and start in the August intake? Absolutely, yes. Um, you will need to be in, I mean, when you're offered the position, if there are any personal circumstances um, that absolutely requires you to start in August and defer the program, um, you have to inform the side as soon as possible so that they can make the necessary arrangements with HR, ensuring that when you do start, everything is all ready to go for you. Fantastic. And on that line of questioning, Sam, I've noticed that there's been a couple asking for exact dates and when that will happen. So when we say February intake or August intake, are those intake start dates or is that uh, what does that look like? So the February 2024, usually uh, February 2024, the program will commence around mid-February. So 13th, 14th, around that time. And for the August intakes, the start dates uh, vary between like the first week of August to mid-August. Um, the applications, as I mentioned, therefore for the February 24 intake, they will open mid-June. So we're just currently heavily in the process of, um, uh, in the recruitment process of August 2023 intake, but we will very soon update our website with the application dates um, for the Feb intake as well. Awesome, thanks for that. No worries. And there's one here actually, it's an interesting question. Um, the question was, do you have to do 24 months program or can you just do the 12 month program for graduate RN? And in this scenario, the person has some experiences in EM, hence why they're asking. Mm -hmm. So could you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I will. <laughs> yes. um, look, um, being an EN myself, I can talk to this quite readily. It is very different being an EN to an RN. Yes, the scope of practice looks a little bit similar, but there's a lot of big changes that occur from going to an EN to an RN. Um, and Vicky might be able to, to talk to this as well from coming um, as an anaesthetic tech to an RN. Um, but um, yes, you do sign into um, a two year program with a continuing, so you, the first two years of your employment is um, in the program and then your permanent employee after that. If you don't want to do study in the second year, though, don't let that freak you out or deter, um, deter you because you can choose the um, consolidation of clinical practice, which is what Vicky chose. Vicky, do you want to talk a bit about your experience? Yeah, I can do. Um... I think there's, there's a lot of questions in the chat that I've said that I've noticed that says, can you leave after your first year, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think people like um, a lot of people that are on at the moment are getting caught up in that we're locking you into a two year. I think we need to put a different spin on it. It's not locking you in. It's giving you the opportunity for employment. Um, so I thought that it was amazing that it was a two year program over a one year program. Um, and you won't want to leave once you've done your first year. So just, just, Letting you know, once you're in, you're in. You don't have to stay, but it's actually an amazing, um, so many career opportunities within Ramsey to stay. For me, the second year, um, depending on, you know, I had a massive chat with the grad coordinator at the end of my first year, of where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. And for me, you know, the post-grad opportunities were amazing, but I just felt like, you know, I just needed to hold, put the brakes on a little bit and consolidate what I already know and bring that into um, my clinical practice now. So 
There is no expectations um, in your second year. It's just basically to help you um, with those steps for further, for your knowledge base. You know, you're not going to know everything after the first year. So for me, it was an um, amazing opportunity to be able to consolidate what I already know and put it into practice now. And there is further opportunities. I sat down with Ellen yesterday and we discussed, you know, next year, maybe I might do my postgrad certificate. Who knows? And that, that option is still there even after my two years, you know. So, yeah, just wanted to get that point across to everyone. That's great. Thanks for sharing your experience, Vicky. I mean, it's uh, who knows what life throws at you. So it's always good to know that you've got the flexibility to choose and really make it your own. And especially I've noticed lean on others for support at Ramsey because um, just for everyone else's context, like everyone I've talked to at Ramsey has been there and never left. So, uh, I mean, to, to really, I guess, emphasize their point, but we had um, Chloe have a hand first and then we'll go to Kelly. So, um, Chloe, would you like to come off mute for your question? Yeah, I was just wondering if you could explain a little bit about the um, theatre-specific grad program you've got. I was just typing an answer. <laughs> How's that for perfect? <laughs> um, it, what specifically would you like to know, Chloe? Because it, it, there's a few different variations. So do you have a specific question in mind that you want to ask? Um, I guess like... Like, do you have like different rotations? Because I know it's like the specific one you go over across the one or two years um, mm -hmm. that it is. And like, uh, I'm looking at the one in Victoria at Peninsula Private. Mm -hmm. um, so whether or not like, are they just like a day surge or are they like 24 hour theatre? What's the... Uh, off the top of my head, don't quote me on this because I'm stretching trying to remember the details of all the facilities that we have because we've got so many. Um, but Peninsula is a um, one of our bigger kind of ones in Victoria. It's got reasonable size. I don't know that they have full 24-hour theatres, but I think they have um, long day theatres with nighttime on call. Um, I wouldn't quote me on that. You'd have to check on our web page. Um, but um, being one of the, the reasonable size facilities, I think they do a really good range of different types of surgeries at Peninsula. Um, so the options that you have, it really depends on what the facility is going to offer you. And sometimes that can be between facility to facility, sometimes even intake to intake or person to person, depending on what you're particularly looking for. And I do encourage people to talk about what they want during the interview process when they go for an interview. But but if you wanted to do, um, generally speaking, if you wanted to do, say, 12 months Scrub Scout, um, that, that's most that can be an option for you. If you wanted to do um, six months anaesthetic, six months recovery, that can be an option for you. Or, you know, it's all kind of interchangeable when I say specific specialties. Um, some facilities like to offer a really well-rounded program. So they might kind of use you over the two years to do six months Grub Scout, six months anaesthetics and six months recovery, and then um, kind of work on from that phase. So it's kind of a little bit facility dependent. I would probably encourage you to reach out to Peninsula Private through their webpage and see if you can talk to their graduate coordinator about what might be offered in that respect. Um, know that anyone, if you're looking on anything specific, you can reach out to um, the email address that Sam Rana had earlier, which is um, gradrecruitment at ramseyhealth.com.au, I think, <laughs> um, <laughs> and <laughs> ask a question, or you can reach out individually to the hospitals for more specific hospital information. Um, but the, look, there's a world of opportunity there. Theatres um, across the country, and regardless of whether or not you're public or private, if you want to go into theatres at the moment the world is your oyster because it is really hard to get theatre stuff for whatever reason um, I spent a huge chunk of my career in theatres because I love the human body um, I think it's the most amazing job but for some reason a lot of people don't want to do it and um, so yeah if you're really looking at theatres midwifery um, rehab uh, mental health at the moment um, they're the really big areas that um, everyone public private whatever needs staff in those areas so yeah it's looking pretty good for you that help 
Chloe. Thank you. Yes, thank no you. Thanks, Chloe. We've got Kelly again. I think she posted in the chat, but Kelly, do you want to come off mute? I think that's working. Oh, hello. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we've got you now. Sorry, I feel like I'm a really big hog in this questionnaire, but <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get it all out, then I'm going to be thinking about it at work this afternoon. Um, so just to elaborate a bit more about the chat, I feel like so I'm coming from a person who used to work in the public system as an AO. Um, so I have five years experience um, working with clinicians and doctors working in West Morton Healthcare as an admin officer and recently transferred, mm. um, transitioned into aged care where I'm currently working as a PCA while I do my diploma. And I guess when I um, remember my interview process in the public system, I feel like you, you have to um, answer all these full on questions and they don't so much ask you about you and you know who you are as a person and it can scare you the interviewing process and you kind of feel like oh my god did I give it my all do I have to think about all these fantastic you know words during my interview um so I guess it's a really scary process for people um especially when there's you know not just one process you've got to work through there's a couple of processes you've got to work through to get to that end result of hopefully receiving an offer um, so that's sort of my question is with the interview process with Ramsey Healthcare, is it as full on as they say uh, um, in that sense? <laughs> I can see Victoria nodding her head, but so I'll, be, I'll let you know. I'm happy to jump in as well. <laughs> Well, uh, Kelly, look, all interviews are daunting. Um, I don't think, I mean, coming on here today is actually quite daunting as well, but yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is scary, but no, um, Ramsey's motto is people caring for people. Um, so they actually value as a person. And the interview questions that I had were completely different to what I thought they would be. Um, so know, know who Ramsey are, what they do, uh, what we do, should I say. Um, know the values. Um, know that also that... <sighs> Oh my gosh, I, I remember getting one question is like, what is what is your um, biggest achievement in your life? I did not, ex I've never had that interview question before. So it made me really think, wow, like they actually want to know about me. So um, don't be scared. Don't get overwhelmed. You will, um, you're going to be scared. But honestly, um, it's just follow, you're prepared for this. Uni have kind of, like uni or TAFE have prepared you to do this. And you've had life, life experience so just be prepared going in, but also be yourself. And it's not as scary as what everyone makes it out to be. I Thanks, hope that's Vicky. Yeah, definitely helps a lot because, look, at the end of the day, I'm one of those um, people I'm very passionate about caring and I'm very passionate, um, I'm a people person. And obviously what pushed me to do my nursing is losing my nana um, very, very spontaneously to sepsis and it was through the public system. Um, but when she was cared for by the private system, I felt, you know, they made a big difference. And that's sort of what also pushed me to wanting to do my nursing because I just, I love caring for people. And I love at the end of the day coming home and I've got that smile on my face that I've made a difference to someone's life at work. And that's, that's just me. So being able to share that in an interview is important. Yeah. I don't think you're going to have any problems, dear. I think you'd be fine during it. <laughs> be yourself. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problems. Um, I've got, I've noticed a great question in here that I might throw to Sam if I could. So Sam, um, Rose's popped in the Q&A that she was previously part of the nurse-led clinical volunteer support group at a Ramsey facility. Mm -hmm. And she's wanting to know on her application, does it count as a previous employment? Um, or would she put down a student, do you think, and just clarify? Hmm, nice, like clinical volunteer. You can put that as a student, but this is a great question. Um, I will actually have to get back to you on that. Let me just put in my email address. If you can directly email me with that question so that I can confirm on this and get back to you.
Let me just try to typing. Did I make it go away? Sorry. No, no, it's all there. It's all there. Uh, I think I've just, yes. Did go through. I'll just put in my email address there. Yeah. Oh. I've, uh, I can see one question from Hannah. Hannah Trahan. So I'm interested to work interstate. Can I switch my location after my new grad finishes or should I directly apply for another state? You would not need to separately do any application because all Ramsey sites are well connected, they're well communicated. You would need to find, like, confirm with the, your existing site where you would like to work. And um, that particular site is going to facilitate your transfer. So that's not going to be a problem at all. You don't need to submit any other application. Thanks. Thanks. Um, thanks, everyone. And we're coming close to time. So um, if there are any burning questions, if anyone wants to raise their hand, I can see Micah um, there. So I ask them to come off mute. But if there's any final questions after that, we can do one more before we jump off. Hello, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we've got you. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, I'm currently feeling overwhelmed with all the nursing specialties being offered and still unsure what specialty to take. Um, could anyone give any advice regarding this, if that's all right as well? Thank you. So, Micah, just to clarify, you're a little bit confused as to what you want to do because there's lots of options and you're not sure which one to pick. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, um, what I would recommend, um, and this is an amazing question, I get asked it so regularly, um, what I would recommend is that you sign up for a general med surge type program, and then um, see what you enjoy or what you don't enjoy as part of that med surge program, but really keep in contact with your graduate coordinator and say, okay, I'm doing med surge, um, I love it, I'd love to stay med surge, but can I try a different subspecialty, so neurosurgery or something along those lines? Um, or if you aren't particularly gelling with that med surge environment, because regardless of what the specialty is, the nursing skills are all very similar. Um, but if you think you might really enjoy talking to a patient that had a mental illness who was in for an acute surgical procedure you might think you know what maybe, maybe mental health might be a good opportunity for me you can talk to your graduate coordinator and float that as an option and if mental health's not available at the facility that you're working with we can reach out through our network to see who might have a mental health availability for you um, or you might like to um, to try operating theatres or day surgery or you might like to go into the oncology unit or day oncology or rehab or the world's your oyster essentially is what I'm trying to say um, and if you start in an area and if you don't like it and I answered this question for somebody else earlier if you really don't like it we ask that you communicate with us it's all about communication with your grad coordinator and if you really are struggling in an area we want that conversation to occur earlier rather than later because if we think that we need to move you into a different area to try and help you realize your goals we'll do what we can to do that where there's availability um, but we really want to support you through whatever the blockers are that you might have. Long story short, we want to help you realise your goals. And if you don't know what your goals are, we can have direct career discussions with you to help you achieve them. But I would always start off on general med search because you can move in any direction from there once you've bed down those general skills. Thank you so much. Good luck, Micah. Such a great question. It's awesome. Were there any final takers for the last question? Feel free to raise your hand and I can bring you off mute if you'd like. See a hand by Lily again, here you go. Hi, yes, I'm sorry if this question has been asked. I had to duck away from my computer. Um, with on the, uh, the, uh, the application process under the preferred specialties and locations. Um, I know that we've been talking about day surgery. 
what does that technically come under under that? Because there's general surgical or there's general medical slash surgical. Me personally, I'd go the general medical slash surgical, um, yeah. but put in in your words where you get to talk about you that you really want to work in day surgery. Okay. It just depends on the way that the hospital structured because sometimes course. they might think perioperative as well. <laughs> It's okay. very confusing, <laughs> okay. but just put in there somewhere that day surgery is your ultimate goal. That's where you really want to work. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And thanks, Victoria, Kim, and, and Sam for helping out as well. So just as a reminder to everyone, um, Kim, if you could share the QR code, you can actually go ahead and start the application process, uh, you will also see what we call a pre-register on that same page where you can register your interest and you will be notified whenever Ramsey's programs are going to be opening for further intakes, uh, as well as look at the profile and things like that. So feel free uh, to start that journey and Sam and the team will help you out if you have questions along the journey too. Um, but thank you so much for your time, everyone. And yeah, it was great chatting and uh, best of luck. Thanks, Shaq. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. We'll leave the screen open as um, participants drop off, but thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Don't work too hard today.